It's been a full year of Sale Lounge episodes. Can you believe it? You and I have already covered the auditions and what goes behind the scenes, the earnings and CEO ranking, types of voices and techniques, recording music and anime, how royalties work for CEO artists, and even how the idol culture is influencing the CEO industry and those wanting to be CEO artists. In this episode, you and I celebrate this first anniversary of the podcast, one that counts with a massive announcement, so stick around if you can. Let's kick off this episode of CEO Lounge. Welcome to Say You Lounge. I am your host, Vanessa. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Say You Lounge. I am your host, Vanessa, and today we will be celebrating the first anniversary of Say You Lounge, as well as the 11th anniversary of the Hand That Feeds HQ that was a couple of days ago, on August 1st. And to celebrate both, in this episode, I will be answering your questions. So I created a, sur a sort of form in May and I let those I let that form be available until mid-July so that you could at least leave your questions or your comments. My name is Vanessa and I am the founder and content creator at The Hand That Feeds HQ. I created the website in 2010. However, the website as you know it only started to take shape in 2012. In 2011, I started reviewing music by Mail Say You and some bands, namely Old Codex and Gran Rodeo. They, those were the very first bands uh, with Say You in the lineup that I started to follow. And I started to review Mail Say You music because of Mamoru Miano and his single Orfeus. So you have that, those are the, the pretty, um, the very first steps on the website. Now, let's check your questions. And I will be checking randomly, I should say. Um, I'm still new with Idol 2D singers. I've started to discover Idol Master Side M and I really love it. And for now, I can't, I can't wait for Tokyo Color Sonic project, as I'm so into Chiba Shoya's voice. So I want to ask, what can new fans expect from the project? Thank you for your time. Well, thank you very much for your question, Izzy. And Tokyo Color Sonic is quite the project, isn't it? I was... Um, first of all, I didn't receive any uh, press release, so I had to actually cover it as other people were watching it. So it took quite a long time for me to understand what the project is about and what it can provide to us. I am pretty excited about the formations because it's the very first time that you have a buddy system. So you have two Seiyu working together, but only one of those actually sings. And that's actually pretty interesting, uh, especially if you look at the lineup. First of all, I do understand why you, you're into his voice and you're into his acting because he really, uh, first of all, he has a terrific voice, not only speaking, but as a singer, he's quite versatile and he's quite talented and is showing slowly how talented he is in his work in anime and now in the various 2D music projects that are going on. Tokyo Color Sonic is a project that's It happens in the future, I guess it's 2088 is set in the future and in the future that in which there, there isn't a color uh, per se and idols are adding color to the life of other people and they have a body system which is pretty interesting in which a composer will be teamed up with a singer of course the characters and they will be working together on music. Uh, of course, the music, as I understood, will be in a wide variety of music genres, although the, first, the very first song um, featuring the, the main four vocals, uh, Shoya Chiba, Soma Saito, Takeuchi Shunsuke, and uh, Gakuto Kajiwara, um, 
that first song of course is a bit of EDM with hip hop, but I've heard and I can't confirm it because I haven't reviewed the single and I don't listen to previews that the, the character song for Arashi, which is the character that that Shoya Chiba voices is actually rock. So I believe that the project will cover a wide variety of music genres and maybe Tokyo Color Sonic will be the project that will wrap up 2021 uh, on top uh, in terms of popularity, seeing how how many people are have, of course hyped up because of the character designs being the same as with A3. And of course the music sounds good, the mixing sounds well, it's a project that in a way reminds me of last year's Perfection Noise, although Perfection Noise is not that popular, but still Shoyachibi is also there, in case you haven't checked it, I thoroughly recommend you. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about, about Tokyo Color Sonic and I sure hope it is a project that sticks around for long enough so that uh, we can actually see the seiyuu that are part of it grow and deliver unique uh, songs to us. So yeah, I'm pretty 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 excited. I sure hope you are as excited as I am about the project. I can't wait to review the music on this project uh, because I don't know what to expect about the music. That's a really really good part um, about the project as eclectic as this one. So yeah, thank you very much for your question. Well, here's a name that I <laughs> I usually don't memorize uh, names of the people that actually visit the website. I do the, the website or interact with me on Twitter or on YouTube, but this is a name that I instantly know. We've talked about quite a bit on Seiyu Lounge's episodes in the comments section, so I really Appreciate whenever I see the name Gracia Delgado appearing. Uh, so, hello, Gracia. Um, and thank you for sending me uh, message, uh, messages and uh, suggestions. Do you have any album that you think is a must for every male CU fan? If it's possible, can you recommend one for people that just started to get into CU music? And and other for people that that's been in the fandom for a while. You can say more than one if you want. <laughs> you know that you've just created this uh, Seal Lounge episode, Gracia. Do you know? I can talk about my favorite music for a whole long time, and people will get sick of it. But let's see. Uh, we've got other, ca other questions in the same topic. What is a hidden gem you recommend? Do you have any advice to, to how to learn to differentiate music genres? So first of all, you have main music genres. So you have rock, pop, jazz and electronica. Let's say that these are the four main genre music genres for say you. There are many other music genres, but those usually tend to be deviations or uh, subgenres within these main genres. And you, first of all, you need to know the main uh, characteristics of each music genre. So pop music usually is bubbly. The chorus is simple and it usually is catchy. It focuses on trending sounds. A couple of years ago, pop was a bit of R&B, pop was a bit of EDM. Nowadays, pop has a lot of tropical elements in the mix. Some would say reggaeton is an example of one of the music genres that is actually uh, influencing pop music right now. So pop is a bit volatile and it rides the waves of the trends. So that's a music genre that usually you can't for sure say that you are actually listening to it because it usually picks elements from music genres that are now popular. Then you have rock music. Rock music is known for having strong guitar driven sound. So guitars are everything in rock music. There are of course subgenres in, in rock that focus on piano, drums, violin, sometimes in the even a cello. So you of course those are subgenres and those things get a bit obscure. But for starters, rock music has a strong guitar sound. Of course, Pop can also have guitars, but never on the same level that rock music has, because rock music will sound 
roar to you. Will sound like a band is playing right beside you and there are no scenes playing in the background. There's no electronica whatsoever. It's just rock. Of course, there's the electronica rock, but I won't talk about that right now. Otherwise, you get confused. Then you have uh, jazz. Jazz music is self-explanatory. Usually it's flamboyant, which is to say a bit quirky. Uh, the music also sounds a bit offbeat for those that are not familiar with, because jazz music uses different uh, tempos and different time signatures for the guitars and the drums. And usually you're listening to a syncopated beat, which isn't common in rock or even in pop music. So jazz is easy to understand, usually there's a big brassy sound and the contrabass or the, the... Yeah, it's the contrabass. The contrabass is a big, big element in jazz music. Of course, jazz music can be either fast-paced or slow-paced, whether it is bebop or swing. And bebop is the fast version of jazz music and swing is the slow version of, of jazz music. Of course, there's in-betweens, but let's not talk about the in-betweens. Then we have EDM. EDM, I believe it's the weirdest music genre when you have to describe it. So I will say for sure that one beat sounds progressive and a DJ will say, no, this beat doesn't sound progressive. And it has really a lot of sub... sub-genres and niche genres and it's really complicated. I. That's a, a music genre that sometimes gives me headaches when I have to describe it. But yeah, that's... Uh, pop music has simple lyrics, simple verses, it has a catchy chorus. It's not a rule, but generally it doesn't have much depth in terms of the lyrics, the content. Um, rock, uh, it can have depth or not, it really depends on the artist. Um, usually guitars are big on those songs. Um, it's not mandatory, but sometimes there is a, a guitar solo in there. Jazz music is flamboyant, it's bouncy, there's a lot of bass there, and there's a lot of brass as well in there. EDM, it's usually fast-paced, it can have a lot of scenes in the background, all of, and of course, if you need to check sub-genres, it gets a bit tricky. Now, what, what advice do I, do I have in terms of understanding or how you can differentiate different music genres? I'd say the best advice that I can give you is to listen to a lot of music. Of course, this, this doesn't sound like ad, any advice at all, but that's the way that I actually work. Um, when I'm working on content for The Hand That Feeds HQ, I usually look for playlists on the web that don't have vocals. And by chance, I found lo-fi hip-hop. I didn't know about it, but I did found lo-fi hip-hop that way then I know that I actually enjoy, for example, a couple of jazz songs. And I didn't know if I actually enjoyed the genre as a whole. I looked for a, I looked for a jazz playlist and I started to listen, listening to it. And I started to notice that certain elements are common to a certain to that music genre. And that that music genre can have two main variants, the slow and the fast paced and I slowly listen to those, try to make the best of what is he, what is here, what are the elements. I, of course, try to understand those and I, of course, use the Wikipedia to understand why one part of jazz music is slow and the other is fast-paced and I got to know that there is bebop and swing. Then I started to look for playlists with bebop music and playlists with swing music. You know, you start with a topic and you start to branching it out as much as you are interested in a, in a genre and a subgenre. And you, the more you listen to that type of music, the easier it is for you to actually tell apart which style or music genre you are listening to. If you pay attention to the music, you start to notice elements that repeat uh, in all songs. Oh, you don't need to, of course, 
no music production or no music playing, you will feel that you will, your brain will register those repetitions and you will, you will from that point on, especially with more training, you will automatically say, well, this is bebop, well, this is swing, well, this is R&B and this is pop. And you can understand that. Listen to a lot of music, um, try to listen to it with a critical uh, ear. So not only just appreciating the music as it is, but trying to find uh, when each song uh, plays, if there are common things in there. Sometimes it is the theme, sometimes it is the instrumental, sometimes it is the way a singer performs a song, because there are music genres that are really specific on the way that singers interpret the songs. So you have that as well. Um, lot of music, listen to loads of music. Now, do you have any album that you think is a must for every male Sayu fan? That's a really good question. However, it really depends on how people, how much people are open to actually listen to Sayu. Because I know that there are people that are really specific about not liking one Sayu and liking another. So my suggestions will be controversial. I believe so. So let's see what I can find for you. Um, first of all, I, bl I don't have the physical album with me, unfortunately. Cashcom is Dusk. I believe people don't appreciate them enough and this is a, such an underrated album that I believe that people should give it a go. Of course, this is rock music with a bit of pop here and there, but it's mainly pop music, uh, rock music, so you will have a hard time if you don't appreciate rock music. Uh, but Kashkomi uh, with Dusk, uh, I believe that's an album that deserves all your attention. Uh, but Shonogami and Shoyachiba are absol absolutely awesome as singers. I was surprised with how good they sound together and how high quality their songs are. That's an album that you can listen from start to finish and you won't get sick of. It's a mini album, it's six songs, unfortunately it's not available on Spotify. I believe not as well on Apple Music, so you need really to purchase it on Ototoy. It's available on Ototoy, it's a platform uh, in which you have digital downloads, official digital downloads, and uh, you can, for a fee, purchase the music. Of course, you may have to use VPN in some cases because there are some artists that don't make their music available to overseas. Uh, for example, the Tsuki Pro franchise doesn't make the music available for overseas. You need to use a VPN on Ototoy, but you can purchase the CD through there. So my first recommendation is Kashkomi with Dusk. I've got a couple of albums that I would say that every male CU fan should check. And I'll start by saying that From Fairy Tale by Makoto Furukawa should be the one. I do love this album. And I've listened to it a lot of times. Um, it's jazz music for uh, the first half and rock music for the second half. And it has Satoru Kawabara as the composer, and I do enjoy his compositions. And Makoto Furukawa as the lyricist, which is, once again, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I do love this album, and I believe that if you actually enjoy jazz music, and if you actually enjoy a good, robust, low vocal with a lot of vibrato, you have this one right here. So it is, well, let me check. So from Fairytale from Makoto Furukawa. That's a good one. And you should actually uh, give it a try if you love jazz music. If you want to get to know jazz music and you don't know how it sounds, it's also a great entry level CD because Furukawa made it easy and simple to understand. He loves bebop, so you have bebop jazz everywhere on this album. You don't have swing, you have bebop. So fast-paced jazz, bebop. Yumuchida Horizon. 
Once again, I'm really particular about the voices that I enjoy. And Yumochida has shown time and time again that he has a voice that I love. And also has a voice that is easy to um, like. This is a pop EDM ballads R&B album. It has a little bit of everything within pop music. So if you do enjoy pop music, while Makoto Furukawa's album was jazz, I tried to pick albums with different genres, so appreciate it. Uh, while Makoto Furukawa's From Fairytale is jazz music, uh, Yumochida is pop music. Various subgenres of pop, but it is pop music. So you do have an awesome album in here. There's plenty of awesome songs in here. Uh, I would say that my favorite is Error. And can you keep a secret? Those two... Can you keep a secret is an R&B song. Error is a electronic pop song with a really bouncy vibe. I do enjoy that song. And it also so starts with an acapella by Yumuchida. He's doing all the voices in the range of an acapella group, which is impressive. It's Harmony of Waves. It's the song that opens this album. It's quite impressive. And if you haven't checked it, please do. Then, and I believe people are already sick of it, or at least sick of listening to me talking about it, uh, as you may have already noticed in my background, I do have a certain person on display. Really. So, yeah. I am a big fan of Suma Saito, so I do appreciate his music, and I must say that if you are into rock music and, uh, of course, you don't like a rough voice, um, if you do, I do suggest you check uh, Shotaro Morikubo's uh, repertoire, any CD, you have quality music there. However, I usually don't recommend Shotaro Morikubo because this sound may sound a bit too aggressive at first for newcomers. Uh, and even, even for more experienced fans, it can sound a bit too rough at times. Awesome for me because I enjoy fast-paced, aggressive rock. Not that awesome for people that may only enjoy the softer part of rock. And the softer part of rock is here. So we have alternative rock, uh, rock shoegaze rock, surfer rock, uh, ballads, and even um, a rather um, suggestive EDM track. So we have here, of course, you may already know, In Bloom by Soma Saito. So that's the album, my friends. I recommend this one, not only because he's my favorite voice actor but, uh, and favorite singer among Seiyu, but because uh, he's taken a step further, uh, he's almost like Toshiki Toyonaga in the fact that he took a step further and he's creating his music in ways that other, other CU are not creating and is creating in a sound that other CU are not embracing. So not only this album will sound different and refreshing, but it is uh, one of a kind among CU. So you have a wide variety of songs in there. Of course, many are rock music. It starts with a, with a rock song. It ends up with a rather poppy song. So if you enjoy pop, and wanted to check if he can actually uh, perform pop music. He does. Saito has um, a quirk of his that I love, which is to that every CD he releases may have a set of songs right here in the back, right? You see 11 songs, but actually the album has 12 and he always uh, slips a hidden song into his CDs and that's where the magic happens because there's usually a song that wasn't treated it's a demo as it is there's nothing changed in it no sound levels done no instrumentals added to it it's just what he recorded and it's pretty awesome so you have that as well um, so I for jazz music I recommend Makoto Furukawa from Fairytale for pop music I recommend Yumuchida's Horizon and for rock music, I recommend Soma Saito's In Bloom. So, I would recommend additionally, if you like Electronica and you're already a fan of Seiyu, that you check Lolo D and Anthos. Those two groups, of course, are different, uh, but their sound is usually pretty exquisite. 
Uh, anthos have a unique sound to them. Their soundscapes are always with a summer touch. Uh, at the same time, Lolo D has that beauty, that growth, especially if you are aware of Tsuki Pro, growth have because it's Takeshi Hama creating the songs and that composer is a genius. So you have that as well. Uh, so Lolo D for Electronica with a touch of lyrical performances and anthos for EDM. Not pure EDM, but EDM nonetheless. If you're just getting into CU, you're for sure uh, checking the popular CU right now. So you're checking Natsuki Hanae, Yuki Kaji, Hiroshi Mono, Jun Fukuyama, Daisuke Ono, Hiroshi Kamiya. You're checking the big leagues. Some of those have solo careers, others don't have, I would say. If you want to start with a good album, I would say mm, Daisuke Ono with uh, Stargazer. That's an awesome album. It's his best to date. Um, it's for person for people that follow this career since the start it will sound like a massive upgrade from his very first CD for people just catching the CD for a ver for the very first time it's a good entry level CD for anyone trying to get into Seiyu he's got a really pleasing voice the music is trendy so if you don't like the obscure music genres and you prefer to listen to music that you would usually listen to on the radio or on the TV or on YouTube and that it's trendy and that it's it goes in line with the music that you now listen to and that is popular is doing that with Stargazer so I would recommend you to check Stargazer if you want to get into Seiyu but you really don't want anything to upbeat I would suggest you check Kotaro Nishiyama's City um, so that's a good album that you could for sure listen to and first of all get familiar with his voice that is really specific um, and then get to understand uh, that say you actually can sing well and do so while listening to music that is simple calm and pretty relaxing for a first uh, approach to, to say you music I would say that that's the best, w best way to enter or join the uh, Seiyu fandom. Of course, if you are like me, you start with the, the strongest and the hardest stuff there is around. So I quickly went from Shotaro Moriku to... from Mamoru Mian to Shotaro Moriku and then Old Codex and Gran Rodeo, so that's quite a, a massive step. I would recommend now that we are, are on topic Old Codex with Leatherless because that's the I would say this, the most um, easy listening CD, should say the word easy listening. That's a really good album. I do appreciate the artistry that Old Codex have been cre creating or delivering to us in the last couple of years. And that album is the epitome of their quality. I believe their best to date. And I believe unless something really awesome happens, it won't be topped any sooner because that's a really good album. You have a little bit of everything if you like rock music. It has screamo, it has fast-paced punk rock, it has ballads, emotional ballads, uh, it has really good tunes that uh, it sometimes it, those emulate, uh, for those that especially like uh, metalcore, emocore, and I should say new metal. So there's uh, strong influences of Linkin Park and bring me the horizon in case you listen to artists from the West. And those are pretty easy to tell apart in Old Codex's music. So there's that. Then I will I will recommend and that's because I do love this album. Uh, it's a variant by Trigger. So I do have the album here. I, this is the limited edition A, if I'm not wrong but the album should look like this if you purchase the regular edition. So there's that. Awesome album, perfect for people trying to get into 2D music projects. They are one of the most popular uh, 2D groups uh, currently in Japan, so that's a perfect way to start. Um, they are the most popular group within the Idolish 7 franchise, so there's that as well. 
and uh, they recently held a live show and many people were impressed. I didn't get to watch it, so I am trying to avoid spoilers. And they do have a pretty nice lineup, which highlights the qualities that voice actors have on the vocal end. Even if you don't enjoy the CU in question, uh, I t thoroughly recommend you because you, you have Soma Saito, who is a tenor, which is the highest vocal uh, range for a man. And you then have Wataru Hatano, who is a baritone, which is the normal vocal range for a man. And you then have a bass in Takuya Sato, which is the lowest vocal range for a man. And you have the three vocal ranges, the three main vocal ranges in men, and especially spoken in Japanese, so you can easily, if you understand the differences between the three singers, uh, especially in terms of voice tone, you can, after that, start to understand the differences in other uh, groups. So I would say start from there as well. And lastly, uh, a hidden gem is Toshiki Toyonaga's music for of the entertainment because this is the album that really started a lot of things for CU and he's a, a believe it believe it or not he's a pioneer. Toshiki Toyonaga went a step further and he produces his own songs uh, in this album. It was the very first time that the CU wrote and produced the album and created the songs. So. That's really impressive. This is a, a work of art, a piece of history as well. And not many people appreciate the music that Toyanaga creates. I don't I don't know why. And I would be pretty interested in knowing why. Uh, but this is a beautiful album. Uh, just quality all over all over it. And that's there's a wide variety of music genres in this. I would say that this album is mainly pop, but there's a lot of rock in here and even Enka, which is a traditional Japanese music genre. And Toyanaga absolutely smashes it. Is pretty awesome. So this album is the hidden gem that I would recommend. Well, we're going to the next question and now it's another name that I absolutely can't forget because it's the very first person that actually um, supported the, the podcast. So we're talking about PM. You may have heard that name a couple of times in some episodes. So oh, I like this. Let me let me read the question and then read your question, PM. And the question that you are making isn't. Oh my God! I was thinking about creating an episode of CEO Lounge under this topic. So let me uh, try to answer this without grinning like a fool. Let's talk about it. Do you have any Dream Collab or Dream CU Collab or 2D projects? Dream CU Collab, I will say it simply, just the, the simplest way. Makoto Furukawa, Yumu Chida and Soma Saito. The three say you should do a collab or they should collab between them. I just feel like like they do have um, so much talent that I would love to see them uh, do something pretty interesting. For example, Yumu Chida and Tasuku Hatanaka should be a good collab as well because they both have that high tension pop music uh, that works pretty well with both and both know how to dance. I can say the same about Soma Saito and Makoto Furukawa. They do okay and they do pretty well. Uh, if I was in their, in their shoes, I, uh, I would be butchering every dance that would be thrown at me. Um, so yeah, that would be a good collab, Yumuchi the Task Hatanaka, for a dance, for a dance song. Uh, Sai Sumo Saito and Makoto Furukawa for a jazz song would be pretty awesome or a song in the same vein as Vampire Weekend by Sumo Saito. That would be pretty interesting. Um, Makoto Furukawa and Yumu Chida would be interesting to find them in an R&B song. I don't know why it would work really, really, really well. Uh, at the same time, I would love for, in terms of bands, uh, Old Codex and Gran Rodeo to collab. 
I don't know how, but it would work. That's because Kisho and Tatsu have pretty awesome vocals. So yeah, I do have a lot of dream collabs that I would love to happen. And if I could pitch in any money to any of the dream collabs I just said, I would um, I would want that to happen. And especially because uh, Makoto Furukawa, Yumuchi, and Soma Saito have been talking about collabing with each other, but nothing has happened so far. And knowing how the three of them are from different music labels, it can be really tricky for them to actually come to a conclusion that they should work together. You most likely would have Shotawoi and Yumuchida working together pretty fast, uh, rather than having Makoto Furukawa and Yumuchida working together, for example. But I dream of that, and I would love for uh, these collabs to actually happen. Uh, I don't, of course, this isn't a two-way conversation, but I would, I am curious about what would be your dream Seiyu collabs uh, or even 2D projects. So please do leave a comment if you actually have dream collabs. Next comment, and this comment is by you say, wow, this is an interesting question. And this question is about Subasaito. <laughs> As you can tell, this will be a question in which I will be talking a lot. Uh, since Soma Saito is in charge of his own songs, I'm always curious of the lyrics within. Do you think the lyrics of the songs are messages from him intended for someone else? Or as what he's saying in interviews, those lyrics mostly come from books, movies, animes he's watched? What are your thoughts about Soma, so Soma Saito's song lyrics? Bookmark, for example, sounds really nostalgic. It's about the time he was in uh, college. And you can really tell that, that those lyrics are personal experience, as much as he wants to say that those aren't. Um, and Vampire Weekend, I couldn't possibly know from which book, movie or anime it would come from, because I do know that he reads a lot and watches a lot of anime and movies but a uh, vampire weekend is a personal experience or a fantasy of his. Hikari wa Mizu no Yo, of course it's based on a book. Kesho Sekai, yes, it's based on a book. Um, but if you listen to a big part, uh, at least a big part of the appeal in, in Bloom is how personal the album sounds. I don't know about you, but Carpool sounds like a really personal experience at least l reading the lyrics and listening to the song it sounds like you lost someone you loved or lost or to death or lost because they lost contact but he's talking about someone that he lost uh, regardless of which type of loss it was so it is a personal experience in carpool schrodinger girl it sounds as well as a personal experience Vampire Weekend is the same thing, uh, or more like a fantasy. Of course, Kitchen is a rambling, it sounds like he was just having a good fun creating it on w whatever place he writes the, the lyrics in. Um, sounds like uh, one, of, one of those songs that he is really, I'm just having fun. So let's create something as uh, chaotic as possible and nonsensical. Uh, and the song works pretty well. Of course, I am talking about In Bloom. And when you get to Canaria, that is about death, and Isana, that is about re rebirth or death, depending on how you approach the lyrics, you get to see, uh, I should say, the literary side of Soma Saito. It's not really about the, the books or the movies or the anime as he's watched is more his literary vein. It's more him as an author in those two songs. And I really love the worlds he created in both. Uh, so I would say the lyrics in his songs end up being a mix of experience of his, fantasies of his, and a bit of his literary self or his author self in there. I wouldn't say those are messages intended for someone I wouldn't say that. I I saw some people speculating about the lyrics in C uh, or she, as it is pronounced in the song, 
because there's the, the symbology of the camel and the same thing about penguin sanatorium about the imagery of the penguin that uh, tries to uh, forge a path for two people and one of those people leave that penguin um, midway through the journey so it could be about past loves that didn't work for him or things that he regrets but more I wouldn't say those are messages to someone those are more like his personal experiences although he's trying to mask those as characters he created based on books or experiences uh, he had while watching anime or movies or whatever so it's a mix of personal experiences of his at least from the way I interpreted the lyrics many people will say otherwise and fantasies of, fantasies of his Vampire Weekend is a good example of that Ringo is a good example of that Rutsubo is a good example of that um, and I would say a bit of his author self next set of questions so we now have Lauren welcome and thank you very much for sending in the questions and the comments uh, what first got you interested in Seiyu? Their voices. I do love, and I am pretty sensitive to voices. Um, I can right away tell if I like or, or don't like a voice, and I don't need to listen too much to actually uh, fall in love with the voice or absolutely despise I wouldn't say despise it, but don't not enjoy it at all. So, what got me first interested in Seiyu? The voices. How did you learn Japanese? How did I learn Japanese? Through anime and music. Like I said before, I listen to music all day. Really, I wake up, let's say I wake up at 10 a.m. and I go to sleep at 4 a.m. because that's usually the time at, at which I go to sleep. And I am listening to music throughout the, the, the whole day in Japanese. So I am listening to the words, how the, those are pronounced. I am trying to understand how to make uh, phrases or sentences and I'm trying to understand the best uh, of the vocabulary that is on those songs. Whenever I don't know a thing, I use Jisho. It's a website, a free website. It's a dictionary for kan kanji. So I usually go there and just type the sound that I listen to and usually it gives me a list of kanji that I can check that may be closer to what I've just learned or just listened to and it usually helps me guide me through some of the songs um, when did you start to learn Japanese uh, I start learning Japanese in 2010 I am still learning Japanese what can I say about my Japanese uh, language learning I am currently taking a one classes that's because I don't have the grammar um, from that uh, level um, Basically, I didn't learn any of the grammar, so I had to go back to the basics. Uh, but in terms of understanding Japanese, I can read and uh, write, and I can understand Japanese at some level, uh, especially uh, podcasts or uh, radio shows or events. I can understand at least 70 to 80% of what is being told, unless the, con the concept or the theme is too complex for me to understand. Uh, what streaming platforms or online stores do you recommend for streaming and or buying music? So, streaming platforms I use uh, Spotify. Whenever I don't purchase the physical CDs or, or don't purchase the digital uh, versions, I stream music uh, through Spotify. I don't use Spotify on a daily basis. Uh, if I want to purchase the music, well, um, for physical CDs I do purchase through CD Japan. I do use the links on the website as well for you in case you want to purchase through them. I've been a client since 2012, so... Uh, another way is through, and lately I have been uh, on uh, Ototoy uh, Rampage. Ototoy is an online store and uh, it's a Japanese store, but it has menus in English, so you don't have uh, that many issues uh, navigating on the website. Although if you want some specific things you have to write the kanji of the name of the seiyu or the kanji for the name of the songs or the groups. Um, they have a lot of content that is available for overseas fans to actually purchase directly. Those uh, And there's at the same time a couple of CDs or franchises that have 
content that is uh, region locked. So digital singles or digital songs I purchased through Ototoy, physicals through CD Japan, streaming through Spotify. Assuming you buy multiple CDs, how do you afford them? Those are my savings and I only purchase the CDs from the Seiyu or the 2D music projects that I really love. Sometimes I've purchased, if it's about my favorite Seiyu, I purchase the physical version, original, from uh, CD Japan. Um, then there's the other option. You go to Yahoo Auctions and you purchase the CD for really, really, really cheap on auction. And you, of course, you will need to have a proxy to purchase that for you. I use from Japan. Um, and you can purchase CDs by, I believe I purchased recently uh, Kashkomi's Dusk um, for one euro. That's one dollar. So you can already tell that I can purchase music at will uh, if only I use um, a proxy. Of course, proxies aren't cheap, but if you bundle a couple of things in the same uh, bundle um, or parcel, it will actually work. So I usually use part of the money that I earn monthly from my daytime job because the hand that feeds doesn't earn me much or any money. Uh, what keeps you motivated to work on your blog and podcast? I like Seiyu and I like music and this is a hobby. So I don't know what more motivation should I have here. I love uh, music and I love to talk about music. All my friends know about it. I talk a lot about music and I talk a lot about the Seiyu industry. Even if people are looking at me like, really? Um, so... <laughs> I want to, in a way, tell you what is there, what is good, what is interesting, what you should check, what I recommend you to check. Um, but those, of course, are only guidelines. I want you, of course, to spread your wings and find the CU that you love, follow them. Even if I don't like that CU, that's okay. Um, and really, just enjoy voice acting in general, supporting the CU that you actually love. Um, that's what keeps me motivated. This, uh, this is a hobby, of course, so whenever I have free time from my daytime job, and I hope this answers as, as well your second question, which is how do you find, find time for the hand at Fizz HQ? I work remotely for a company, so I do have free time to do uh, work at the hand at Fizz HQ, and I work really freely in my remote work for a company. So I do have time in between my job to do jo uh, do my work for the hand that feeds HQ. Motivation is really about the hand that feeds and the podcast being passions of mine. I always I always loved radio and I was part of a radio club when I was in my uh, I was in my fifth grade. I really enjoyed that and I wanted to be a uh, uh, radio DJ. Unfortunately, I wasn't and I've followed a, di a different path. Um, and I really enjoy talking about and writing about Seiyu. And if in any way people are finding new Seiyu to follow or new music to check, I, I'm really, I keep the motivation levels up. So that's that. Of course, as well, I'm not here to boast about, but whenever I get a comment, uh, especially the nice comments about how people got to learn about a new CU because of what I wrote or because they found about a certain music project because I, I covered it or uh, they got to learn how the industry works because of how I focused on that on an, ep on an episode of CU Lounge. That puts a smile on my face and of course it raises the levels of motivation that I have. Well, we have a, com a set of comments and questions by Ninia. So thank you very much for sending in the questions and the comments. How do you at the Hand at Feeds HQ collect all those informations about CU, both male and female? I'm super curious about these ever since I found your blog. At the Hand at Feeds HQ, I cover uh, male CU music projects. And how do I go about collecting 
all that information. I purchase uh, Seiyu magazines, the physical ones, and I do watch a lot of Seiyu events and I listen to a lot of radio shows. Um, and uh, I, whenever I'm listening to something, even if it's just to pass time, I have um, a, book, uh, a notebook with me that I used to uh, actually write in everything I listen to that may be useful for a Digest uh, or a CEO Lounge episode in the long run. Um, but usually the content is based on uh, magazines, CEO magazines, or even those uh, generalistic or general uh, magazines like Anime Times that covers everything um, that are online. So I do check the interviews that CEO give. I do check uh, interviews on physical media. Of course, those are usually about the music. Um, then I listen to the radio shows um, or even YouTube channels that, that they may have. And I listen to a lot uh, or listen or watch to a lot of CU events. That's how I get the big chunk of information that I have on uh, the content I create. Of course, uh, if you're talking about the more technical stuff, uh, whenever I speak about uh, law themes like the royalties, it's because I have a bachelor's degree in law, so I have, I could be a lawyer, but I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I could be a judge, but I'm not a judge. But I do uh, know a lot of, about law, so I, whenever we're speaking about or talking about law, I am using my personal experience. If I am talking about the behind the scenes in the industry, I'm using my previous experience working for um, two music, uh, a music label and a concert promoter. So that's another way that I add uh, experience to that. Of course, I am adapting what happens overseas to what happens in Japan. Uh, it may not be completely accurate, accurate, but you can't ask those kinds of questions to those working in the industry because they won't tell you. So the, oh, that's another name I remember. Um, the comment e, or the comments are by Melfa Victoria. Um, questions for me. Well, which topic from the videos or reviews of say you artists albums have you, you have fun doing? I really do enjoy reviewing music by say you that are singer songwriters. What I love is when I find a CD and that CD has a story for me to unveil, a story for me to go through and really uh, go to that, that world that was created or, or feel those emotions that are on those lyrics and relate to the protagonist in those stories or even the CU themselves if they were the ones writing those lyrics. I would say a story, a connecting thread, an experience that connects with me and the, the personal touch of a CU in the music they have, either by creating it, by composing it, or writing it. That's usually what I have much, much fun doing. Uh, it's reviewing music that has all those characteristics. Which CU impressed you or surprised you? Mm, through research. Um, I will say... Yusuke Kobayashi because of his story to get into the CU industry and how much he struggled to get into was something that I wasn't aware of and I was uh, first of all surprised and at the same time it only proved that the CU industry is really tough to get into. So Masaito's story about how he was going to give up on being a voice actor, especially as a fan, following him through that time and finding that uh, he was disappearing in front of the eyes of their of his fans and no one knew what was was going on about and he now this year especially he's been saying that he was actually going to give up on voice acting is something that really puts things into perspective and his career completely in perspective What I am going to announce, it's really, really big. And that's because that's the very first time for the podcast and for me and for the website itself. 
So I recently got the pleasure to interview uh, Sayu and their group. And I won't be telling you more because that Sayu and group are pretty, pretty awesome. And I want to tease you until the uh, feature actually drops. Um, I won't be telling as well what type of feature it is, so you'll have to wait a little bit for it. Please do pay attention to the podcast as well as the YouTube channel as there will be teaser videos, perhaps, um, and the Twitter and Facebook uh, accounts or pages uh, as I will be teasing you there. And, of course, there's no award for the person that uh, immediately knows who that say you or that group or which group it is. But I would love to see um, what you think or who you think will be featured in a special piece of content for you. It ended up being a gift for the website uh, 11th anniversary gift, which is an awesome gift, and a, f a special uh, present for all of you for actually taking the time to check the contents on the website, check the videos here on the channel, to actually listen to this podcast and being awesome throughout. Because the Hand That Feeds HQ does have an awesome community around. I'm really, really happy that I can give you something interesting, unique, exclusive, and special to you. So thank you very much for sticking around. Thank you very much for being supportive of this of this project. Thank you very much for dealing with me, talking to you every Monday and Friday. <laughs> thank you very much for joining me today. And I'll find you all in the next episode of See You Lounge, an episode that will be a normal one in which I don't show my face. Please do enjoy the next couple of episodes. I sure hope you do enjoy the suggestions I gave you of CDs to check, um, if you can. So, thank you very much for joining me today, and I'll see you guys around soon. <laughs>